Now we have our impression. In this stage, we're going to show the production of the model. Um, this is a uh, special tray system. Um, there's many ways of making a sectional model, and this is one of the easier ways. And here you can see the locating lugs for the base being placed into the tray. Now it's very important that you press these in very tightly because if you don't locate them in now, once you make the model, they will never go in. Okay. The first stage really then is to get the impression close down to the tray. You can see all the um, bits hanging down where the material gone into the saw because we want to remove those and we're going to remove um, the centre of the pallet as well and that's going to allow the teeth to be closer to the tray so we haven't got a model that's about four inches high. Watch your fingers. So ideally you want a sharp scalpel, mm. not like this. Uh, remove all the excess from around the sulcus and then shortly you'll see that I'm going to remove the, the pallet too. Yes, the, the pallet is of no interest in this model and in fact we're not even going to cast the area where the pallet is. It's, um, we will block it out later. There it goes. And you're cutting that back level to the edges of the impression. Yeah, you? and so that's going to allow the teeth to sit down close into the tray. So some adjustment might be required here, you might have to play a little bit just to get everything level and equal. Careful with that knife. Yeah, watch the fingers. There we are. Okay. The next thing to do then is to um, mark the centre line of the impression so that when you turn it over full of the dye material, you know where you're going to line the impression tray up to the model tray. So we do two things. First of all, I've made a nick there in the centre line, and then I'm going to turn it over, line up the centre of the teeth over the um, valley in the tray system and then I'm going to take a marker pen and mark where the tray is positioned the impression tray is positioned over the model tray I the tray remember. system is quite good actually in that that system on the bottom when you look from the bottom the the area that sort of tracks the arch is clear yeah. so you can line everything up until you can see all of the teeth it's quite good so that's you marking the side of the tray and lugs on the tray system so we've got three points of reference. Okay, on the bench then, we have um, our tray system. Now we have blocked the centre out with wax, um, just to stop all the plaster going in there. And we're going to be using 100 grams per model of the die stone material. And this is a special die stone material that is scannable um, using laser. Yeah. Um, that is a surface tension relieving agent, which is effectively an alcohol based um, material. And this is the pot for vacuum mixing the die stone so that we don't incorporate any air into it. And importantly, that is 20 millilitres of water. There we go. So into the pot first with the water. And then we're going to take a, the 100 grams of the um, die stone material, the powder, that goes straight in. Once you've done this, you've, you, once you've mixed the material, you're probably going to have about five minutes working time so you don't want to stand around gossiping you want to get on with it there's no, there's no panic on clean the top of the pot because this is vacuum mix and we need to create a nice seal around the pot i'm just hand mixing it to start with just to incorporate all the powder into the liquid so the powder doesn't get sucked up into the vacuum mixing machine so on with the lid now we've got a good seal there's a rubber seal on the on the bottom of the lid. It clips into the vacuum mixing machine, so that's the mixer. Uh, it's going to be mixed for 40 seconds, it's preset time by pressing the button. That's the sucky bit, so that goes into the side of the pot and that's going to suck all the air out of the material. Yeah, at that point you were pointing at the gauge and you should be checking that it's into the green zone implying you've got a good enough vacuum. Um, so that's nearly 40 seconds later, it finishes. We give the material a bit of a vibrate on the vibrating uh, post. Take the vacuum off, and then we're back over to the other side of the uh, 
room to vibrate the material into the impression as you've done before. Now, I say as you've done before, this time you need to be pretty careful because we don't want any blows in the um, surface of the, particularly the preps or around the margins or, and ideally, any of the adjacent teeth. So you can see that what's happening is the material is being introduced at one end of the impression and using the vibration it is being led round like leading sort of marble round a little maze and you're watching the, the, um, the die stone go into each sort of nook and cranny of the impression, sort of. There we go. Now don't be too liberal with the material because that 100 grams and 20 mils of water makes an amount that is very specific for making one of these models. So dropping it all over the floor in the impression table is not going to help you. Likewise, the material's vibrated into all the little nooks and crannies of the tray. When you look at one of these close up, you'll see that there are um, grooves, vertical grooves down the side of the tray, which allow the um, parts of the um, model to locate back into their original position. You'll see what I mean when you get one in your hands. Um, so you need to make sure they're all nicely filled, and that's why I just popped it on the vibrating table there, just so um, it, they set, the material settled in. The remainder of the material is just stacked up on top of uh, the tray and on top of the impression if there's any left. Like this, just get the, re the remnants out of the bowl. And then we're going to wait a few minutes just for this material to firm up slightly before turning the impression over onto the tray. In that time you want to be cleaning out the bowl. Uh, it's pretty important that you do that because these things cost a fortune. You can see actually here that the shine has gone off the material. So we're, we're very near the stage where you can turn one over onto the other. So make sure you can see your um, alignment marks as well. It's very easy to slot plaster all over them. Yeah. There we go, down there we it go. goes. Ease it down, little shuffle just to allow the material to flow a little bit. We've lined up the, the two pen marks and the centre line. You can see the excess material just squeezing out at the sides there, not too much. Okay, just making sure it's lined up and then finally we turn the whole lot on its head and this is to encourage the uh, die stone particles to work down to the preparations and for the moisture to come up to the top hopefully making a stronger model. And there we are, so this we give that a good half an hour at least yeah. and uh, very delicately with your knife um, you can see it's just being relieved around the edges of the tray here and you want to try and make it so that you're not levering one side of the tray significantly more than the other otherwise you'll be uh, taking teeth off of your new cast. Yeah, you want to be pulling this uh, impression yeah. vertically up. Yeah. So here we go, with a little look. It should just be relieved enough now and we should just be able to put it on the bench, pull straight up. There we go, one model complete. Job done. Excellent.